Welcome to Smex Ed. Class is in session. I'm your host, Amanda King, and I'm here to teach anybody who wants to fucking listen how to have the audacity to say fuck it to societal standards and live their most authentic life. This podcast is dedicated to bringing the sexual conversations we have behind doors onto the main fucking stage. Because sex, masturbation, squirting, guess what? It is all normal. And by bringing these conversations to the forefront, we help people feel less alone in this world. We help them feel safe. We help them gain their power back. We help them step into their confidence and express themselves sexually in this world unapologetically because it takes fucking audacity to be your truest self. And we, we have a boatloads of audacity all up in this bitch. So let me ask you this. Are you ready for some epic shit? Hello, everybody. So I am here to discuss this question below and do a little training, if you will, on prostate play and ways to stimulate your prostate if you are not ready for some of these toys. But I am going to mention some toys at the end that I would recommend for kind of beginners who are looking to milk their prostate either during solo play or partner play. But we're going to go over how to stimulate it with just your fingers. We're going to go over basic information, right? Because we have to back up. We may have some new followers. So what is the prostate? How to find the prostate? What is prostate milking slash prostate massages? Um, fingering techniques in order to stimulate the prostate, how to stimulate the prostate externally, and then some toys if you're interested in toys. I think that's what it all is encompassing today, but we're going to jump into it. So the prostate, which is also referred to as the P-spot, is found in penis owners and its main function is to produce seminal fluid for ejaculation. It helps project semen from the penis and it is surrounded by a bunch of nerve endings. Where is it located? The prostate is located two inches within the rectum, anus, whatever you want to call it, inside a penis owner. You can access it by typically sticking your fingers up into a rectum or you can access it externally as well. Whether you access it externally or internally, the P-spot orgasm is considered the super orgasm that penis owners can have. And this is why. It is a full body orgasm that feels different from an ejaculatory orgasm. Meaning, I would say like in my personal opinion, it's as close to a vulva owner's style orgasm that a penis owner can feel. So it is all encompassing. It is supposed to be ridiculously powerful and it has no refractory period. Meaning if you are stimulating the prostate externally or internally, a penis owner should be able to have multiple orgasms without that kind of decline in climactic state. So when we look at an ejaculatory orgasm, you ejaculate and then typically a penis owner needs time to rest and this is called your refractory period, right? It's where you rest, it's where your body regulates itself, and then you are able to go again. Well, with a prostate orgasm, a penis owner can go over and over and over and over again with little to no refractory period in between. So let's talk about the external stimulation of the prostate, which is called the perineum stimulation. Now, the perineum is that part of your body where the balls, like it's the skin that connects the balls to the anus, mostly known as the taint. And every time I do a video on this and use the proper name, literally there's like nine people who are like, it's the taint. Yes, it's the taint guys, but we're trying to be a little bit more medically like forward here. But anyways, it's the taint. So you find that on a penis owner and you can stimulate it externally because in that little patch of skin, there's a tiny divot. What you want to do is you want to make sure that the penis owner is already pre-aroused, right? You don't want to do any type of prostate play dry, meaning the more aroused your partner is, the easier, easier it's going to be to find the prostate both internally and externally because the prostate swells with arousal, remember. So you want to stimulate yourself before you go fishing for your prostate. Now, externally, you are going to find a little divot 
in the taint. It's going to be like kind of behind the ball, just slightly in there. That divot is where the prostate actually sits. So as the prostate swells, you may be able to feel that divot become more defined. What you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to take one or two fingers and you're going to want to press upwards on that divot just apply a little bit of pressure. How much pressure? That really depends on your personal preference. Every single person is different. So it may be trying to stimulate it by applying light pressure. And then as it starts to feel good and it feels more normal, applying more and more and more pressure. Um, if you want to also use a toy, this is a great way to kind of use a bullet vibrator or some type of mild vibrator on this area. Now the question I get a lot, the next question is, how do I know if I've found it externally? Like, how do I know if I found the spot? You're gonna get the sensation that you have to pee. It's in a way like vulva owner squirting, right? Like it's a sensation where it all of a sudden feels like, oh, it's like a fullness, right? It's like, oh my God, I have to pee. If you feel that when you're pressing on that area in your taint, you have found your prostate, that's it. And that is the only way that you can explore prostate play externally. And that's the way that I always suggest everyone start, especially if you have never been penetrated before. Um, penetration takes a little bit more time getting used to. And remember with penetration, we don't want to go zero to a hundred right off the bat. And there are some penis owners who are still uncomfortable with the idea of penetration because of societal and generational constraints and all that shit and conditioning. And I get it. So if you want to externally stimulate it, that's the way to go. And like I said, the amount of, amount of pressure applied depends on the person. So if you are doing it yourself, make sure you go slow, make sure you take your time, um, make sure you are not just like jamming it in there real fast or like hitting your spot too hard because remember it is your body and bodies bruise and they can get hurt. So take it slow and if your partner's doing it, make sure that you're communicating with your partner. I need more pressure. Can you try this? It should feel like a sensation that you have to pee, sometimes like a tickling sensation and just keep doing it while you are stimulating the other area as well. Now, when we are stimulating the prostate internally, this is what we call prostate massage and or prostate milking. Prostate massage is more for the medical term. Prostate milking is when it is made in order to feel pleasure. Some people ask if prostate play hurts. With any type of anal play, there will be minor discomfort. You should never be in immense amount of pain. You should never feel like you are any sharp pains, any of that. And what you wanna make sure you do before you participate in any type of anal play or prostate play is you wanna make sure you go through anal prep, which is attempt to have a bowel movement, at least like if you can, close to the experience as possible, if not within 24 hours. Um, douching is quite up to your preference. If you wanna douche, go ahead. If you don't, that's okay. Typically, if you have regular bowel movements, you don't really need to douche. Some people love to shower beforehand, right? And just to clean themselves up beforehand so that they feel that they are like the most hygienic possible. If you're using your fingers and or a toy, you wanna to make sure that you sanitize and clean that toy before you and also with the prep work, you have to be mentally prepared um, for penetration. And what I mean by that is if you are freaked out, nervous, or you are telling yourself that you don't deserve this pleasure because it makes it mean something about your sexuality, you innately are going to clamp up. The anus is a muscle. So if you are tight, tense, nervous, this is what's going to happen you are literally not going to be able to take anything in. So the mental game with this is just as strong as the physical game. It's saying, hey, this is an area of pleasure. I get to deserve, I deserve to explore and it's normal and it's okay. So other tips before you start penetration. Um, number one, like I said, take a shower, make sure you feel clean, do all of the prep work. Number two, make sure you pee beforehand because like I said, um, 
when you are experiencing prostate orgasm, it's going to make you think you have to pee. And that's another kind of mental game that you have to go through, just like vulva owners do with squirting is, hey, my body's feeling this, this sensation. I do not need to pee. This is a orgasm that is trying to, ex what is it, escape my body. I am safe in this moment. This feels good. I can kick back, relax, and let what happens happen. Next, let's discuss insertion because this is a part of prostate play. The prostate is located two inches within the rectum. So what you're going to need is you're going to need a good lubricant. If you are not using a toy, you can use a silicone and or water-based lubricant. If you're using a toy, you want to use a water-based lubricant. You want to lubricate the toy and or your hand and your anus, not just one or the other. You want to lubricate both because you want to decrease the amount of friction and you want it to be able to slide in comfortably. The first thing that you are going to do is you're going to use one finger. Yes, only one finger. If you were using a toy, you were going to use the smallest toy possible. We'll go over that later. But if you're using your finger, you want to use one finger. And you basically want to practice and start by just sticking the tip of your finger in allowing your body to adjust, taking it out, doing that a few more times until you can comfortably sit with like the tip of your finger in a little bit more, then a little bit more, then a little bit more, then a little bit more. You are going to need lubrication. No, spit is not enough lubricant. It's just not, no matter what you see in movies, it's not enough lubricant. So make sure you have a good lube. So it's located two inches within the rectum. If you are doing this and your partner is penetrating you, make sure you are communicating with your partner because especially if your partner's never done it before, it's going to be a little bit of trial and error experience at the beginning because they're in a way kind of fishing around. Not, It's not like they're like hands deep in there. Like they're just, they're trying to find the area and you are trying to relax. So it's going to require a lot of communication. Once you find the area, some say it feels like a soft pebble. Some say it is a squishy tissue. Some say it feels like a rock or a walnut. It's been referred to as a bunch of different stuff. You're going to feel something up there. Once you feel something up there, there are a few type of fingering techniques that you can do in order to stimulate it. The first one is the come hither motion. Just like if you are trying to steam, stimulate a vulva owner's G-spot, you're gonna take your fingers. Once you hit that area, you're gonna kind of go like this against the area. Once again, the amount of pressure applied and the speed at which you do this is up to your personal preference and communicate with your partner. So even I have two fingers, you should be doing this with one finger first. So come hither, kind of like a motion, against it, check in with your partner, see how that feels. If that is okay, but you wanna try something a little bit different, you're gonna take your one finger and you're gonna do the doorbell. The doorbell is literally pressing in, pressing out, pressing in, pressing out, pressing in, pressing out, communicating with your partner and or feeling yourself, this is enough pressure, I need more pressure, I need another finger, whatever it is. Another method you can try is taking the pad of your finger and circling around the prostate. This adds another type of stimulation. You can kind of even press in a little or do it lightly. Once again, preference is desired. Another technique that you can try is kind of like a vibration technique. So kind of moving your finger back and forth as much as you can to, what is it? Simulate like using an actual vibrator. So those are four different fingering techniques that you can use. Make sure you ask your partner which one they like the most. And it may take some time to explore that method and see what makes them come faster. Now we're gonna discuss the different positions you can try with this. First position in order to reach your prostate if you're doing this solo play or with partner play is laying like face down on your chest. This will give you access to kind of come around the back and be able to insert your fingers and or stimulate your prostate, <laughs> prostate externally. Holy shit, say that 10 times fast. Be able to prostate, nope, stimulate your prostate externally. So lay down, face down, lubricate your fingers, lubricate your anus, then kind of go backwards and insert yourself from there. Now, the second method is, I think, what most people would consider the most common method, which is kind of being on all fours on your hands and your knees and being able to reach 
around your back again and be able to stimulate your taint and or insert yourself into your anus that way. Third position is lying on your back knees up going through the front way. Uh, some people feel more comfortable stimulating their prostate from this angle because it takes pressure off of the knees and it's a little less like contortionist style than being on like laying on your stomach. So laying on your back, kind of bringing your knees up and putting your hands through your legs to stimulate it that way. And the fourth position we will talk about is kind of like lying on your side, bringing one knee up into your chest and going around your hips to stimulate your prostate externally or internally that way. All of these positions can be used during solo play and or partner play. Obviously during solo play, it's sometimes a little bit of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Awkward positioning and you have to figure out which position, which position works best for you in order to feel what you need to feel. And this is another reason that a lot of people will go towards toys more than using their fingers because of the fact that if you have a toy in there, like the toy I showed the other day, like you were able to put it up inside of you, turn it on, it can stimulate you that way while you work the front end of your body. And then that way you have the dual type of stimulation without going like twisty, bendy, kind of contortionist style, I don't know, movements. So those are the way that the ways that you can stimulate the prostate externally and internally with just your fingers if you were not ready for toys. And I highly suggest in general, if you're ever going to insert something into your body, always start with your fingers first um, and always make sure your hands are clean, washed, sanitized before you do so. And also for vulva owners, if you are looking to explore anal play, and like vaginal play, you never, you never do both in the same session, right? Don't ever finger yourself and then finger your ass. Um, have a toy specifically for your anus uh, or a toy specifically for your vaginal canal and use your fingers for one or the other because there can be bacteria that is cross-contaminated between each. This is goes for the same during anal sex and uh, pen penis and vagina sex. My God, I can't speak today. Uh, you never want to be going back and forth. It's just like this is just to prevent any type of cross-contamination and or making your partner sick because of something. So always just... I mean, this is a way of practicing safe sex, like be educated, do your research, ensure you know what you're doing so that you're not, so that you're not unintentionally causing harm to your partner. So just make sure that you educate yourself anytime that you are looking to explore any new position, any new kink, anything like that. Now, when it comes to toys, there are a plethora of toys that are out there. Um, and I've done a bunch of other videos and podcasts and articles about these toys. But if you've never explored anal uh, play before, you always want to start with an anal training kit. That's what you can kind of see in the background here, um, which typically is three to four different style, different size butt plugs that go up in length and girth. Um, and you want to take your time with that. There are also pegging toys that you can purchase in order to use as well. Now, when it comes to toys, there are kind of different styles that you can play with when it comes to prostate stimulation. For example, when you, when you use a toy, you can play with the depth of insertion slash penetration with the toy, meaning you can take the toy and only insert it an inch, you can insert it halfway, you can fully insert the toy. That way when you're playing with depth, you can see what feels best for you, which causes the most powerful orgasm, and be able to, in a way, collect research on your body, become more self-aware of the depth in which you need the toy, and that will help increase the likelihoods of you having a prostate orgasm in the future. The next kind of stimulation you can practice with a toy is pressure. How much pressure against the prostate makes you have the ability to ejaculate and or have an orgasm. That's something I meant to mention. So with prostate orgasms, you will not necessarily ejaculate with every orgasm. There are times 
where or some penis owners say that they ejaculate every single time with a prostate orgasm. Some don't. Some just feel that like full body shudder. Either way, there is typically a little bit of seminal fluid that comes out. That's why it's called milking um, when it is stimulated. But if you don't ejaculate from one side of the room to the other, that's completely fucking normal. Okay, back to pressure. Play with the amount of pressure that you like against your prostate with the toy. So if you're using something like a pegging toy that has a handle, you can kind of press against it, then release, press against it, then release, or have your partner do it, whether they are pegging you with a toy and or a strap on, ask them to play with how much pressure they are putting against your prostate. And the last is being able to kind of play with these types of stimulation and vibrations that your toy offers. So some do straight vibration, some do rotation, some toys do like the one I showed the other day, did that kind of like flickering motion against your prostate. Explore with what types of stimulation work best for your body. All that I wanted to cover in this training, the only other thing I would say is how to communicate to your partner that you want to experience prostate play because that's a question I get often. And we all have to recognize that there is a stigma when it comes to penis owners wanting to participate in prostate play, making it mean something about their sexuality. And it's fucking bullshit and it's stupid, but it is all preconceived notions that we are brought up believing because society villainizes things it doesn't understand and that it is afraid of. And so being able to ask your partner to explore in prostate play needs to be recognized as a very vulnerable thing for someone to do, um, especially if they are in a heterosexual couple because of all the connotations that come with it. So talk to your partner and be honest with your partner of why you want to explore it. And like, yes, you deserve to feel that pleasure, but let's have a more intimate conversation rather than, oh, I wanna see if it makes me come really hard or, oh, I wanna see how this feels. Make your partner part of the experience. And what I mean by this is saying to your partner, listen, this is a way I can feel more pleasure, but yeah, yes, but it's also a way that we can connect on a more intimate level. This is something new that we can explore and that we could try together. Um, I want to be closer to you. I believe this will help me be closer to you because I've never explored this before and I trust you and I value you and I see you and I want you to be the person that I explore this with. So those are a few ways that I would kind of bring up the topic of conversation or approach it, I think is the better um, term here. And also recognize that if your partner is an absolute no, right from the beginning, do not put pressure on them because no one should be coerced or manipulated into participating in anything sexually that they don't want to. Do not put pressure on them, but you can always say, okay, if you're ever open to exploring this discussion again, I would really like to sit down and have this discussion and help you become a little bit more open-minded. Um, or maybe there is something that I can do to help you like open your mind a little bit and then leave it alone and don't pressure them. Let them come to you. Let them bring up the discussion and let them air out all of their preconceived notions that they have and their fears around it as well because anal sex in general is so taboo and it shouldn't be but we have to recognize that when we are talking about bringing in partners and exploring new things sexually it is a vulnerable thing for both people so let's recognize that let's value that and let's not put pressure on our partners to do things that they are not ready and or comfortable to do as always if you have any follow-up questions feel free to Snap me, DM me if you're watching this on YouTube. Leave some com leave some leave some comments. Leave a comment. Um, I will probably end up doing an article in April's issue about prostate play because of the amount of questions that I get on it, as well as the different types of lubricants to use um, during solo play and partner play. So look for those coming out in the April issue, most likely, of Smex Ed Magazine. And if you have any questions, just uh, feel free to reach out and ask them. But yeah. Thank you so much for listening to Smex Ed with Amanda. And some parting words for you today. Remember this, no matter how hard society pushes you down, no matter how many times you fall, as long as you get the fuck back up, they can never stop you. You are unfuckable with. You will win. Don't allow this world to dictate how you show up in it. 
Don't allow society to make you bend the knee. Instead, make them bend theirs. And don't forget, if you like what you heard, go on to iTunes and Spotify and leave your girl a review. Until next time, my beautiful people.